This black pharaoh has been erased from history, leaving a hidden legacy that calls into question our understanding of past civilizations. The Forgotten Chronicle of the 25th Dynasty, a chapter clouded by time and deception. A history spanning 300,000 years unveils the earliest inhabitants of northern Sudan. Within its borders, the ancient kingdom of Kush emerged as the oldest sub-Saharan African realm. This civilization adorned the Nile Valley with exquisite pottery, notably the Kerma Beakers. Sudan's allure lay in its abundant resources, notably gold, ebony, and ivory coveted by many. Among the treasures housed at the British Museum, artifacts crafted from these materials hold prominence. The pull of these riches enticed ancient Egyptians during the Old Kingdom to journey southward, often sparking clashes as both Egyptian and Sudanese rulers vied for trade dominance. Around 1700 BC, Kush asserted its supremacy in the Nile Valley. This dominance triggered conflicts with Egypt, ultimately leading to Thutmose's conquest of Kush. The western and southern realms, unattainable by Egyptian rulers, retained their Neolithic cultures. Egypt's withdrawal in the 11th century BCE empowered Sudanese kings, who ascended to Pharaonic authority. At its zenith, their empire united the Nile Valley from Khartoum to the Mediterranean. A testament to Kushite might and influence is the enduring Sphinx of King Taharko. Expelled from Egypt by the Assyrians, the Kushites flourished in Sudan for a millennium. Their monuments and art echo a fusion of Pharaonic, Greco-Roman, and indigenous African legacies, exemplified by the chapel relief of Queen Shenekt Takit and the Aegis of Isis within the museum's collection. Also, this unique part of Egypt's past is all about the mysteries that historians missed. So stay tuned until the end and don't miss this truth that has been hidden for hundreds of years. Between roughly 2500 and 1500 BC, the vibrant cultures of Kerma thrived, leaving behind a distinctive mark through their ceramic creations. Astonishingly, these skilled artisans crafted intricate vessels by hand, foregoing the use of a wheel. The featured vessel, a relic of the classic Kerma's era spanning approximately 1750 to 1550 BC, showcases the hallmark black upper section and a lustrous red-brown base separated by an irregular purple-gray band. The interiors and black tops boast an exquisite metallic sheen, defining the essence of classic Kerma pottery. Kerma maintained its autonomy during Egypt's initial ventures into Sa'd. However, this dynamic shifted after 1500 BC as Egyptians triumphed over the Kushites, initiating governance under their proxy, the Avzi Roy of Kush, headquartered in Kerma. The distinct handmade pottery crafted by these artisans carries a powerful identity. While certain forms may bear resemblance to contemporaneous Egyptian types, others radiate unique attributes, distinctly influenced by the African heritage. Within this cup emerges the essence of the African influence subset known as polished incised ware. The cup, bowl-shaped with a round base but of a cup stature, seemingly catered to culinary needs. The African influence shines through in its adornment. Cross-hatched diamonds, reminiscent of basketry designs, grace the exterior, accompanied by herringbone motifs and various smooth and incised geometric patterns. The intricate incised designs were etched onto the vessel before the clay dried. The subsequent firing resulted in a glossy black or, at times, red finish heightened by meticulous polishing. Finally, white pigment highlighted the incisions, a technique exemplified in this cup, although much of the pigment's remnants have faded. This exquisite vase emerged from a looted sector of the CB Cemetery in southern Nubia. It presents a remarkable example of fans employed in hue s beyond the customary blue. Blue and black decorative motifs embellish the cream body, featuring two bands of lotus petals at the neck and base, with pendant lotus buds. The vase itself takes the shape of a lotus bud. From around 1560 to 1070 BCA, Egyptian dominion uncumps Nubian territories up to the fourth cataract of the Nile. This newly acquired land was demarcated into Wawat to the north and Kush to the south. The Egyptian empire zealously exploited resources within these lands, engaging native inhabitants in their armies and employing them as laborers on civil and religious estates. Amid the dominance of Egyptian power, a surge of new towns and temples emerged, with Sisibi being founded during the reign of Akhenaten. The Nubians embraced the language, religion, and aesthetic expressions of their overlords. Within this vast, unmistakable Egyptian influences are palpable in both form and style. The lotus symbolizing rebirth and new life held a profound significance to the ancient Egyptians. Around 1070 BCA, the Egyptian presence in Sudan receded leading to the rise of a robust second Kushite dynasty by the 9th century. Seizing the turmoil and division in Egypt, King Kishtay extended his reign to Thebes by the mid-8th century BCE. 
His successor Pianchi effectively commanded the entirety of Egypt's Nile Valley. By approximately 716 BC, the lineage of rulers Shibako, Taharko, and Temwedamani established the 25th dynasty affirmed as Egypt's legitimate sovereigns. Their capital in Napata, near the Fourth Cataract, held profound religious importance. While Assyrian forces disrupted Kushite control of Egypt between 674 and 663 BC, Kush remained a formidable force in Sudan for over a millennium. After 300 BC, Mero, situated northeast of Khartoum in a fertile grassland, became the burial site for Kushid rulers. Mero blossomed into an economic hub, establishing trade links with the Mediterranean world. Although Egyptian influence marked art and architecture, local traditions also flourished. In religion, a fusion of Nubian and Egyptian deities transpired. Apidemak, the lion-headed god, stood alongside Amun, Osiris, and Isis. The Kushite dynasty's reign concluded around 350 CE. In Egyptology, the term Aegis describes a broad collar crown with a deity's head, perhaps Isis in this instance. Temples portrayed these adornments on sacred boats, transporting deities during festivities. One Aegis ornamented the pro, another the stern, with the deity's head indicating the occupant. This piece originated from a sacred boat of Isis. Originally, the goddess's eyes and eyebrows were inlaid, a feature characteristic of later Kushite art. A rectangular recess in her forehead once held the uraeus, signifying her divinity. The surviving portion of her headgear features a vulture. A vulture headpiece, once worn by the goddess Mut, consort of Amun, later became common for all goddesses. The absent part of the headgear, once a sun disc and cow's horns, has been lost to time. A cartouche bearing the name of the Kushite ruler, Arnakamani, renowned for constructing the Lion Temple at Musawarat, Esufra, marks this artifact. The early Kushite monarchs slumbered upon beds, resting atop stone platforms nestled within the tombs beneath their pyramids. Inspired by the pyramids of Egyptian private tombs during the New Kingdom, circa 1550-1070 BC, these structures bore distinct Kushite characteristics in their burial practices. King Taharko introduced Egyptian elements to the Kushite burial ritual, embracing mummification, coffins, and Egyptian origin sarcophagy. This transformation also included Shabtai figures like the one displayed here. These figures crafted in the style of the Middle and New Kingdoms. Epochs celebrated as Egyptian culture zenith by the Kushites display rugged features and are crafted from stone, echoing early examples. Throughout the era of Kushite dominion over Egypt, the kings held residence mainly in Memphis. Kushite princesses ascended to the esteemed role of God's wife of Amun. Piaki Shabako, Taharko, and Tamwetamani Rulers of the 25th dynasty infused Egypt with much-needed stability, quelling fragmentation, and local dynasties. This resurgence of art, architecture, and religious scholarship flourished under their leadership. Taharko especially left an indelible architectural imprint constructing temples across Egypt and Nubia. Yet, it was during Taharko's reign that Assyrian incursions ousted the Kushites from Egypt, briefly regained by his successor, Tamwetamani. Control swiftly slipped away once again. This stela, part of a pair discovered in Hamadab, south of Mero in Sudan, the capital of the ancient kingdom of Kush guarded the entrance to a temple. The upper section of the stela, adorned with remnants of a relief panel, portrays Kushite sovereigns Queen Amenarenas and Prince Akinidad. Positioned on the left, they face a deity, presumably Amun. On the right, they stand in the presence of a goddess, likely Mut. Beneath, a frieze unfolds depicting captives in bondage, a testament to the shifting fortunes of time, etched onto the stela's lower segment. An inscription written in Meroitic cursive script graces the surface. This script once encapsulated the indigenous language of the kingdom of Kush, an enigma that eludes decipherment to this day. A testament to this script's mystique is the absence of meaning despite the presence of 15 consonants, four vowels, and four syllabic characters in its alphabet. Within this enigmatic inscription, the names of Amenarenas and Akinadad emerge from the script's cryptic dance. It's conjectured that Amenarenas was the leader during the fierce Kushite struggles against the Romans in the latter part of the first century BCE. This inscription likely commemorates a daring Kushite incursion into Roman Egypt in 24 BCE. During this audacious raid, a trove of Roman imperial statues was spirited away, potentially encompassing a prized bronze head of Augustus eventually discovered within Mero's embrace. Now sheltered within the museum's collection, this head stands as a tangible relic of an enigmatic past where history's echoes converse in an undeciphered tongue, leaving behind trails of intrigue and wonder. 
As we move through history, it's important to remember the past if we want to make a more fair future. Don't miss the next video, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and press the bell icon for more updates.